Welcome back students to another edition of Basics of Mechanical Engineering, Unit 3, Thermodynamics. Today I wanted to talk about energy. So in the past few classes we have looked at uh, or we have observed what uh, the different forms of energy, specifically thermal energy and how it inter interacts with the world. We have looked at uh, its conversion for, from heat to work and we have explored the various concepts around thermal energy but in reality we have not actually strictly speaking talked about energy so today what we are going to do is we are just going to talk about the concept of energy and how uh, it transforms from one form to the other so first of all what is energy energy can be defined as the capacity of an object to do useful work. Energy in, in itself, you may have an innate understanding of what it is, but expressing it is rather difficult. So as I've said, energy can be called as the capacity of a body to do work. Energy has different forms or different flavors, if you may. For example, the device which you are using is has con contains an energy storage device a battery and what it is doing is that it is converting chemical energy to electrical energy not only that this device which you are holding is actively converting radio energy to electrical energy that is it's getting all of the signals from uh, the tower or uh, your Wi-Fi signal which is uh, with, with, uh, with which it's communicating and it's converting this for one form of energy to another form of energy. Now the electrical energy within your device, what's it doing? It, uh, it's it's uh, passing through all of the transistors, it's passing through all of the gates, it's passing through all of these components and it is being converted to a bit of heat energy. At the same time, in the front of the device, what on which you are looking uh, this image, what it's doing is that it's converting this electrical energy to light energy and as well as sound energy. So in just this one example, we have seen that there are multiple forms of energy and in each of these forms of energy that you interact with every single day. So you have got light energy, you have got heat energy, you have got electrical energy, all right? Then you have got chemical energy and all of these energies are interacting with one another, convert, being converted from one form to the other and it is doing this useful work of transmitting this really important bit of education from me to you okay so these are the different forms of energy what are some of the other forms of energy well popularly you have got kinetic energy which is the energy possessed by a body when uh, it is moving then obviously you have got potential energy that is the uh, energy contained within a gravity field that is, if I lift this object up, its potential energy has increased. So with respect to the ground, you have got an increase in potential energy. But however, if I drop it, what's happening is that the potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy. All right. So you have looked at potential energy and the kinetic energy and its conversion from one form to the other. We have talked about the various forms of uh, energy, light energy, heat energy, electrical energy and its conversions from one form to the other. Now in each of these examples, when we, uh, when we have talked about this, you may have noticed that when I'm talking about it, I've in an overall form, I've talked about energy in a very general sense. Energy is a capacity to do work. However, in each of these in specific forms of energy, what is happening is that they are being converted from one form to the other. Now, if you start summing these energies up, if you start summing these energies up, so for example, in your phone, in your phone, so you have a battery, it has got chemical energy 
and it will have some capacity it will have some capacity uh, in your phones you are probably look at uh, uh, you all know the capa capacity of your batteries as mah milliamp hours so some phones will have something like 2800 milliamp hours and some phones will have something up to even 6000 milliamp hours right so this is your capacity of the battery to hold energy how much energy it is holding the chemical energy and it's being uh, the the capacity is expressed in not in terms of chemical potential however it's being expressed in terms of electrical potential how much electrical energy it can develop uh, it can deliver so this is the cap uh, uh, battery capacity now it's being converted from elect uh, from chemical energy to electrical energy then it's also being converted to heat energy some of it some of it's being converted to light energy some of it's being converted to sound energy and what when you do all of this when you look at all of this as a system as a system what you will find is that the amount of energy that you supply in terms of chemical energy is equal to the amount of energy that you get in terms of electrical energy sound energy heat energy light energy so on and so forth what i'm trying to say is that the energy as it is being converted from one form to the other is being conserved that is, if you put in, say, 10 joules of energy, what you get back is a total or what the total form what you get back is equal to 10 joules. It may be 0.1 joule as uh, heat energy, 0.2 joules as electrical energy, the remaining as light and sound energy. But eventually what you are, uh, what is happening is that the energy is being conserved. So what am I exactly talking about? I'm talking about the, the conservation of energy. As you move from one form of energy to the other, what happens is that the total energy in the system always remains the same. The total energy is being conserved. And you have heard about this before in your yesteryears. This is nothing but, the concept is nothing but the law of conservation of energy which states that energy can neither be created nor can be destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to the other. So even if you have got an very, very vastly different forms of energy, and if you try to convert it from one form of, of that energy to the other, what's going to happen is that the net energy is going to remain the same. All right. So if you sum up the, uh, the, the final, uh, if, you, if you sum up all the final forms of energy, you will get uh, the, the, the total value will be the same as the, in, uh, the, the value of the initial form of energy. Wind power, for example, what happens in wind power? You have got your turbine, you have got air moving through the turbines. So you have got your kinetic energy of the air, kinetic energy, pressure energy, thermal energy and what happens is that as soon as it passes the air passes through the, uh, the turbine what happens is that the pressure slightly drops the kinetic energy slightly drops and this kinetic energy is being used to spin up these turbines this huge giant wind turbines okay now as soon as the wind turbine starts spinning up that is it's converting some of this kinetic energy some of this potential uh, the pressure energy some of the thermal energy as well into this kinetic energy of the uh, turbine now the turbine in turn is uh, converting this motion the kinetic energy of itself into uh, and it's using that kinetic energy to spin up a generator it is using this kinetic energy to spin up a generator and the generator is now spinning. It starts rotating as well. Okay, so it's transferring this kinetic energy to the generator. All right, and the net transfer of the, uh, uh, in the net amount of uh, energy is, uh, that is being transferred is being conserved. So if it uh, if it transfers 10 joules, this one is also accepting 10 joules. And what is the generator do, uh, uh, doing? It is converting this uh, 10 joules of energy which it's received from the uh, the entire uh, turbine unit to electrical energy. And how much il uh, il uh, energy uh, can you uh, just think about it again? as the energy is being conserved if you if the generator receives 10 joules of energy it converts this 10 joules of energy into electrical energy 
okay so it converts it into electrical energy and probably just equals to which also equals to 10 joules okay so if you measure each of these forms of energy and you sum them up what you'll find is that this uh, uh, the energy is being conserved the total amount of energy that you put in is the same as the net amount of energy that you uh, receive at the end all right just the form may vary the type of the energy that may vary okay same thing in nuclear power you you what you are putting in into the system is nuclear energy you are putting in nuclear energy that is you are putting in uranium 235 and what is happening is that once it splits up you have uh, you have the, uh, the, the 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 creation of uh, cut or conversion of nuclear energy to heat energy okay so you have got uh, your fission products and a lot of energy okay and this uh, the fission products uh, give out energy uh, as per or the uh, as per the equation e equals to mc squared all right so you have this uh, really famous equation and you have got uh, the, the final products are slightly lighter than the, uh, the initial uranium and what you're having is that what, what you get at the end is uh, thermal energy in the form of E equals to uh, or, or whose value is equal to E equals to mc square where the m the amount of mass is the difference between the mass of the fission products and the initial uh, the fuel okay now again this elect uh, the, the 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 heat which is uh, being released is being converted into uh, uh, kinetic energy in the turbines and that kinetic energy is being used to, uh, to spin up the, the generators and that generator generator generates electrical energy so again you are converting it from one form to the other and again energy is being conserved okay so if you look at different examples probably you going down the hill uh, in each of the forms you'll find that the final energy is being uh, is the same as or the the total amount of final energy is the same as the total in, uh, initial form of the energy and this is the law of conservation of energy okay and what when we when we move uh, to thermodynamics we uh, uh, we come across something called the first law of thermodynamics and the first law of thermodynamics is nothing but the law of conservation of energy that is energy can neither be created nor destroyed it can only be converted from one form of uh, one form to other okay so the first law of thermodynamics is nothing but the law of conservation of energy and it states that the energy can neither be created nor destroyed it can only be converted from one form of energy to the other okay so there was this really famous experiment in which what uh, 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 the joules experiment so what what has happened is that they uh, they they used a uh, a sealed box a, a adiabatically sealed box and they had electrical energy which is being a calorimeter okay they, they had a device called a calorimeter the so calorimeter is nothing but a device which is used to measure the uh, the heat ca capacities and uh, the chemical properties the heat uh, the how much it heat is being released in the reaction it is used to measure that so what is what is a calorimeter it is nothing but a sealed box and uh, it is adiabatic in nature that is uh, that is there is no heat transfer across the boundary it is uh, well insulated so uh, there was this experiment called the joules experiment And what they did is that they they basically had a heating element in which they passed in a known amount of current for a known amount of time. Okay, and what happened is that they measured the amount of heat that was being uh, introduced into the system. And what they found is that the work done, the total work done uh, because of electricity was equal to the total amount of uh, heat that was being introduced into the system so again in this form what they said is that the heat energy was being converted from uh, or the heat energy the energy was being converted from uh, the work the electrical work and was being converted into uh, or electrical energy and it was being converted into heat energy so again the heat uh, the, the, the energy was being uh, converted was being conserved all right it was just being converted from one form to the other it was not being uh, destroyed and this gives us the uh, the the, uh, the equation form of the the first law of thermodynamics that is for a cyclic process cyclic integral of 
uh, heat is equal to the cyclic integral of work done or for a normal process for any other process the, the the difference between the heat trans the net heat transferred across the boundary minus the net work done by the system is equal to the change in internal energy of the system so this is a really important equation that you have to remember that is dq minus d w that is the net heat, uh, heat transfer net heat transfer across the boundary minus total work done on slash by the system is equal to change in internal energy of the system okay so this dq minus dw is equal to du okay so this is a really important equation that you have to remember all right that is the total heat transfer across the boundary is minus the total work done by or on the system is equal to the change in internal energy of the system so this is nothing but the first law of thermodynamics in its equation form now the first equation which i have which is there on your screen that is the cyclic process what is a cyclic process cyclic process as we have already covered before is a series of processes in which the final position or final state is the same as the initial state as the uh, as uh, uh, as a, as a same initial state so uh, you say if you have uh, moved from uh, this position to you go you, you you probably go to your first floor in your house you walk around there and if you've uh, landed on the, the and you come back down and you sit in the same uh, position then what you have done is you have basically done a cyclic process you have come uh, you have done uh, the entire uh, tour of your house and you have reached the same position so you have uh, your net uh, the the total amount of uh, energy change that is the total internal energy change as per thermodynamics is going to be zero all right so uh, your the, the the potential energy change is going to be zero your kinetic energy change is going to be zero and so on and so forth so your your position your final position is going to remain the same and your uh, internal energy uh, it is going to remain uh, the net uh, the internal energy change is going to remain zero now i have mentioned this term called total work done by or on the system all right now this total work on or by the system can be any type of work done it can be pdv work it can be shaft work it can be electrical work it can be just about any type of work that has been done and the net heat transfer across the boundary what can it, it can be it can be a uh, it, it has to be the sum of all the heat transfers so if heat is flowing into one from one area and heat is flowing out from another area so if say q1 amount of heat is flowing into the system and q2 amount of heat is flowing out of the system the total amount of heat that is uh, the total heat interaction is equal to q1 minus q2 okay so similarly if you have got multiple uh, of others you have got different other heat flows that will be the total of q in minus the total of q out okay so this is going to be the total amount of the net heat transfer or across the boundary similarly the summation of all the work transfers is going to be the total work done by this uh, by or on the system and that will be equal to as i've just mentioned the change in internal energy of the system now how do we know that the law of conservation of energy that is the first law of thermodynamics is uh, valid how do we know that the first law of thermodynamics or the law of conservation is valid how do we know that we are not wrong so unfortunately there is no no definite proof of this 
unfor- uh, there is no uh, mathematical exp- uh, you know derivation which i can co- which can I-, i can offer you which says that you know here here are the uh, uh, this is the derivation which shows that you know energy is always going to be conserved how do we know but how do we eventually say that this is a definitive law so this is nothing uh, n- n- uh, this is nothing to fret about this is something called a physical law we know this because this is what we have observed okay so if you look at any of the examples if you look at any of the examples which i have shown you all before or you look at the any of the examples in your surroundings today you will always find that the law the the, the total energy which is being inputted is the same as the total energy output from a system and it takes place in all sorts of frames of reference it takes place in newtonian frames of reference it even takes place in einstein uh, in uh, einstein's relativistic uh, forms of reference uh, frames of reference so in regardless of which form uh, which uh, which reference which form of energy you're talking about you will always find that law of uh, th- uh, the first law of thermodynamics that is the law of conservation of energy is always being uh, is always being obeyed okay now this neatly brings me to the concept of something called perpetual motion machines so what are perpetual motion machines perpetual motion machines are devices which defy the laws of physics okay they run forever they will have greater than 100% efficiency they may uh, they may do something which is physically not possible so what we do is that we classify these perpetual motion machines into different categories so first we are going to look at something called the perpetual motion machine type 1 now on the screen you have an example of a perpetual motion machine you have a cup what is it doing is that there is a small outlet of the cup this outlet is being used to loop it around and what happens is that the what the fluid flows back into the cup now if you have a small sort of a turbine what is it's doing is that it's converting this uh this falling liquid into kinetic energy all right it's rotating it's spinning around and this you're probably harnessing it as some sort of other energy you're probably using it to uh, drive a uh, driver generator and generate energy okay do you think that this is possible this this example is an example of pp pmm1 this is also a short form of it is pmm1 and this is an example of the uh, perpetual motion machine type 1 this in this example what you see is that the total content of the the total output of the entire system the total energy output uh, the energy output of the entire system is greater than the energy input of the system all right okay so this clearly violates the first law of thermodynamics so pmm type 1 basically is a device which violates the first law of thermodynamics a perpetual motion machine type 1 is a device or a category of devices which can violate the first law of thermodynamics that is it creates gen- uh, or generates energy from thin air okay its net energy output in whatever form in probably in terms of electricity in terms of light whatever form the net energy output is greater than the net energy input again you'll probably see such things being used there are people try to exploit this uh, misconception or the lack of knowledge of the pmm type 1 and they try to fool people let me give you an example so this is an example which is actually still being sold on the internet okay so don't be fooled when you actually come across these kind of devices so this what uh, is a device which what the, uh, the as per the description if you plug in into your wall socket what it does is that it optimizes your energy conver- uh, consumption and what it does is that it reduces your power consumption okay they will throw in some terms called power factors and things uh, uh, things uh, such terms as uh, you, you know as smoke screen and what they are actually selling to you is nothing but the pmm type 1 so let us 
analyze this device. Let us analyze this device. Say you plug in this device from your electricity box, from your wall socket, and you plug this device in the middle. Okay. And between this, this is now, now this device is between, this is your, uh, this is your magic device. Okay. Now this is between you and your refrigerator, your fridge. Now what it's saying is that it is reducing your energy consumption. However, think about it. Does your does your fridge start consuming less electricity or does it, uh, will, uh, if, if you hadn't put this box in the middle, does the, uh, does the fridge know that this box uh, exists up the line? No, it's still trying to draw in the same amount of energy, probably like 2000 kilowatts uh, or whatever the energy rating of your fridge may be. It is still trying to draw the same amount of energy through the uh, the wires as before. There is no connection between what's happening downstream and what uh, what the, you, you, what you have put in the middle. Okay, so how is this device actually saving you energy? In fact, what's going to happen is that since this device will have some form of internal circuitry, it is actually consuming more energy, and the total energy consumed will be greater than what it was before. Okay. So this is an example of a PMM type one device. Okay. And you will come across funnily enough across so many other examples in your day to day activity. If you look at you, you, you go through the internet, there will be so many other examples. They will say that if I have an antenna, uh, uh recently there was a, a, a few years ago, actually, there was an app which was being, uh, sold on, uh, on, on the play store. And it said that if you downloaded the app, what it did that uh, did is that it uh, used the entire circuitry inside your phone to basically to try to recover the energy from what which is being uh, transmitted in terms of your radio waves and things of that sort and convert it into your battery life. Of course, that is again a fallacy. It, it that cannot happen. Okay, so that 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 too, uh, if you try to build such an app or to try to build such a device, we just kept randomly captured, uh, uh, you know, uh, total uh, energy, stray energy, whatever it is, that would again be an example of PMM or perpetual motion machine. Okay, so today what we have done is that we have looked at, uh, we have looked at uh, the first law of thermodynamics, we have looked at the law of conservation of energy, and we have looked at the PMM that is perpetual motion machines and specifically the perpetual motion machine type one. Now, before we proceed any further uh, or end this session rather, I would like to introduce one more term. I would like to just introduce just one term and this is actually quite important. It's, it, it's a mathematical term and however it has a lot of, uh, it has a, uh, a huge physical implication uh, in the world of thermodynamics. And that is enthalpy. Okay. So enthalpy is nothing but a, it's a combination property. It's a combination property of uh, nothing but uh, enthalpy is again represented by the letter H. Okay. So H is nothing but the summation of U that is internal energy plus PV that is pressure energy. Okay. So enthalpy is nothing but a combination property of U that is internal energy and PV that is pressure energy. Okay. So, uh, again, it has the same uh, units as joules that is, uh, uh, that of energy joules. Uh, it is again, it is a state function that, uh, that means it's, uh, it's value does not depend on the path of the uh, you know, entire system, uh, but, uh, but just its final position. Okay. So the total, uh, if you, if you took, say you took a different path, if you took path A versus path B, and, but you reach the final state, the enthalpy would always remain the same. Okay. So it is a state function and it is not a path function. 
okay so in the next class we'll have a look a bit more look at what is enthalpy we'll look at its different relations with uh, other properties and so on and so forth so uh, with this we will bring this session to an end thank you very much